What's up everybody, this is Tutmo here. Today I wanna to show you how to get up and running in FL Studio. Now this will not go into detail very much with any of the specific cool stuff that you can do, but we wanna create a very basic beat and kind of show you the lay of the land, if you will. So before I get too far into it, I'm gonna play with the final product and then go break it down from complete scratch and show you how I set that up. All right, here it goes. All right, I think you get the hang of it. The first thing we'll do here is I'm going to click File and New. I'm gonna roll everything up so it should look similar to what you see on your screen when you first open FL Studio 12. The first thing I'll do here is make sure I've got Pattern 1 selected. Now the patterns are what hold all of the instruments that you create. Now, for now it's gonna be very simple. You could technically do everything on Pattern 1, but we're gonna use two patterns in this example. So on Pattern 1, make sure that's selected. We're gonna go here to click. We won't change anything, sorry, kick. And we're gonna left click one, two, three, four times. Now, if you've got this little thing selected, meaning it's bright orange, that means you're only viewing this current pattern. Once you unselect it, it'll play your entire track. We'll get into that more in just one second, but make sure for now that it's bright orange. I'm gonna ahead and click the space bar. It's just a little bit easier to get used to some of these hotkeys. And then I'll hit spacebar again to pause it. The next thing I want to add in here is I'm going to left click every other beat and just throw in a clap. And I'll play that for you really quick. The final thing I'll do is quite simple. On this hat, this number three is slide all the way across. I'm just doing left click. It's almost like a paint motion and sliding all the way across until I've got everything lit up. So let's see what that sounds. And the final thing is the snare. I'll just put a little bump on the end there. So awesome. The next thing we'll do is in our furthest left menu here, I'm going to go to the packs. We're going to left click on that. Yours will probably be completely condensed and I'm going to left click on instruments and I'm going to click on keyboard and I'm going to choose the electric keyboard. As I said from the beginning, this is going to be a very simple sounding song, but to get this onto our channel rack, I'm gonna left click the electric keyboard and drag it over right under the snare. You'll see it'll load the instrument. And if you hit Q on your keyboard, now if you've got a MIDI keyboard, I'll show you how to set that up in a different tutorial, but for now, pretend like you have nothing but a typing keyboard. QWERTY. Uh, I'm gonna hit the Q on my keyboard just to hear what that sounds like. Cool. So I said before we could technically go in and just build all of this into the one pattern. But if you'll remember, I just played the electric piano first and brought that in gradually and then brought in the kicks and the hats and all that good stuff. So what I'm going to do is scroll up to pattern two and you'll see everything's blank. You didn't lose it. It's still there in pattern one, but I'm going to scroll down to pattern two to start that next section. And what I want to do here is with this electric piano thing selected is right click and click on piano roll. That's gonna bring us into the piano roll. That's right. If you click Q, it'll actually highlight C5 is usually the default. Now, if I hit all the top row keys, that's where I'm doing that kind of stuff. We'll start adding some notes in here. And one way you can do it is to click the record button and try to play with the sound. Another way to do it, and the way we're gonna do it in this tutorial, for simplicity's sake, is I'm gonna left click everything and add each note into the piano roll. The first note I'll choose here is gonna be C6. Now that I put this note in there, you can see it's just B5. If I play it, that's the pattern. It's gonna keep playing through that one note. In order to add different notes or more notes, whatever, you gotta left click to add those notes. So I'm just gonna add a B5, B4, and B3. That's what it sounds like. If you wanted to zoom in and kind of see where you're at on these broken out little sections here, I'll left click up in this section right here and drag it to the right. It's zooming everything out and now I can select this bar and just slide it back. You can do it from the right hand side, but right now I'm not capturing that far over on my screen. But now that we're zoomed in, you can kind of see it's the same note. It hasn't extended it or anything, 
but I can see a little bit more clearly where my note is lined up in each of these little hashtags. One way to change how these things are broken out is this little snap to grid uh, magnet looking thing. If you left click that, it'll show you different ways that you can break this out. Um, you'll see how the number, uh, yeah, you can kind of see how it snaps slightly differently. The only thing that I would worry about right now if you're just getting started is if you accidentally switch it to something like uh, like none and then you're like trying to figure out why can't I snap it? I'm trying to get my notes to line up. Um, and it looks like you know they're lined up but they're actually not. Well, hard to hear there. Basically what you did was, and I've done this before, is accidentally turned off the snapping, which can be useful. Once you get a little bit more used to how FL Studio flows, uh, it can be a useful thing depending on what you're trying to do. But for now, uh, we're just going to keep it at like half step and I'm going to drag all these all the way over to the left. The next thing I'll do is add in more notes. I'm going to create my melody here. Um, and you can obviously click through all the way, but after we get this last one done, I'm going to show you how to do this a little bit faster. So let's just hear this. Cool. All right. So the next thing I want to do is up here, I'm going to grab my select tool and that's this little dotted out rectangle tool. I'm going to use that and left click, drag it across everything to select all of my notes. The next thing I want to do usually is click on my little pencil tool. Just left click that on your keyboard, your MIDI, MIDI. on your regular keyboard, do control C to copy it and then control B to paste it. You'll see it paste it right after the last notes here. And I'll show you what that does. And you can just drag it over if you want to continue the pattern. But if you do control C again and control V, it pastes it on the next section over. Once you have it copied, it's on your clipboard. So now I'm just, I'm not going to copy it again. I'm just going to do control V to show you the two differences. And depending on your situation, it can be useful to know both. But usually I do control B because it pushes it out of the way, especially when I get a lot of notes going on. Control B pushes it out of all those notes. So look, control B, B, B. You see what I mean? It just kind of spreads it out a little bit easier. Now you still got to go in there and clean this up a little bit. So I'm just grabbing my select tool, switching over to my pencil tool and just dragging it over. There's actually probably a faster way, but I don't normally build it out this way. So whatever. So now all we've got is just literally the same note playing over and over again. But believe it or not, we've all we're going to do from this point forward is adjust these notes. And I'm walking you through very slow how I'm building out this melody just so you can see all the notes flow together. Okay, I'm going to hit the space bar again just to try it out. The next thing I'm going to do is uh, adjust some of these. And these are just notes that I've played around with. Um, and you can do the same on your end just to kind of hear what they're going to sound like. Grab my select tool. I'm going to move these up a bit. And I'm going to drag these down. Let's drag it down here, see. So I'm going to skip through a little bit just so you don't have to sit here and watch me try to build it completely again. Um, but I'll show you the, the final notes and everything so you have a chance to copy it if you want to. Okay, I think I've got them all lined up here. Let me make sure you can see all these notes. And I'm going to hit the space bar to try it out. going to keep looping through uh, until I hit the space bar to stop it. So again, that's all on pattern two. I'm going to left click on my playlist icon. That's going to bring us to the beginning, basically take us out of the piano roll. So I'll left click that. Now you can see here on our playlist, we have nothing right now. Uh, we haven't pasted anything to the playlist. We just have two separate patterns that have notes in them. So I'm going to scroll down and let's let you see this. I'm going to open the channel rack so you can see that's what we just created. It extends beyond this, but, uh, I'm just keeping it short for simplicity's sake. So I'm going to scroll down and here's pattern one. Now that I have pattern one selected and I've got my pen tool selected, I'm going to click. Okay. Well, if you've got your pencil tool selected, you put one down at a time. Um, and then you right click to delete that pattern. If you want, if you want to do it a little bit quicker and spread them throughout, uh, click on the paintbrush tool and then left click and slide it over like that. So now in our playlist, we've got, if we uncheck our pattern, we've got this pattern going over and over and over again. So now I'm going to add pattern two to this by basically scrolling up and adding pattern two. 
I can just paint brush across. This will just basically play the same thing over and over again, but adding both instruments together, that's something we haven't heard yet. So let me hit play by hitting spacebar on the keyboard. <laughs> Okay, great. The next thing I'm going to do is right click to delete these patterns up top and that's going to leave us with just the instrument. Let me hit play really quick and then it's going to roll into the kicks that we've got. Kick hat, clap, snare. Okay, cool. The final thing we want to do is if you'll remember this pattern came in not necessarily from quiet to louder, but it brought in all the sound. It's a filter. We applied a filter onto it. Let me just show it to you really quick. I'm going to left click on this. I'm going to select the electric instrument here. And if you'll notice here, we've got one, two, three, four dashes. That means this one has not been assigned a track on our mixer. Now we won't go too much into the mixer in this tutorial, but I do want to quickly show you what it is and how it even works. By default, FL Studio assigns the first four channels to the first four instruments here. You can change that just by hovering over it. Now you can see it's three. These are both three. We won't touch any of this in this tutorial except for the electric instrument. Now that we have the instrument open, that's again, left clicking the instrument. We see it right here. On the track, I'm just gonna double click. I'm not gonna assign it yet. I want you to see the mixer here. So we've got nothing, it's totally blank. Here's the channel rack here. So there's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. They're all blank. If you'll look on the far left here, all these slots are where we can put different effects, uh, different things that you can do to the sounds, essentially. I don't wanna affect any of these other instruments with what I'm about to do. You actually have to scroll up and when I do that, you're gonna see it's going to select it for me. So cool, now I have insert five assigned to my electric piano. Now that that's selected in slot one, I'm gonna click left click. You see when you hover over this little arrow turns to down so you can left click it and basically expand things that you can put on it. The one I'm looking for is actually not on this list by default. I'm gonna click on more plugins and if you ever don't see a plugin that you're looking for, always click on new plugins, not new plugins, click on other plugins and you'll see a full list of everything available to you. Later on, you'll be able to import your own plugins, but for now I wanna jump into the Fruity Filter. That's what we're gonna use. So I'm gonna double click that. You'll see it assigns it to this instrument now. Everything's gonna sound exactly the same because I haven't touched anything. And you can test that out too by on the right hand side of this Fruity Filter, I can left click this little green dot to turn it off and on to see what it sounds like before and after that is applied. Absolutely no difference, right? And that's intentional. But what we are gonna do is this little cutoff frequency thing right here, we're going to create an automation clip from it. But what it really is essentially is when I turn this up and down, I have to manually sit here and do it. So watch this. Yeah, it's a very gradual cutoff that's being applied to it, but I want to do that without having to sit here and manually do it right. So what I'm going to do is instead of trying to apply it to this whole instrument, I'm going to select a specific area that I want it to be applied to because for the most part, I want it to be the regular full on sound, but to bring it in gradually and make a cool little boom, 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 bam, bam, bam effect, um, I'm going to bring it at the very beginning. So watch this. So I'm going to Everything goes away, but I can get back to it. Hold on. The little dotted square, I'm going to click that and then select just this specific section of the song. So just the very beginning section, you can see it's all highlighted in red here. And actually, when you do this, it's just going to loop through whatever that selection is. So watch, I'll hit space bar and it's going to play until it hits the end of this red section. It's not going to get to the drums at all. Start from the beginning over. So that's if you're trying to fine tune a specific part of your song. Um, that's a good option to have. But let me get back into what we were looking at here in the channel rack electric instrument. Let's get back to the filter. So my fruity filter is here. And again, we want to get this knob to basically turn up by itself gradually. I'm going to right click and here's where we got the create automation clip. If I left click that, it's actually going to add something to my channel rack called the filter frequency. I'm not going to open that right now. You'll see up here is this purple little section. It's like a little additional instrument. It doesn't look like it does anything and right now it actually doesn't. But if I go over to my select tool, the little pencil here, see a little hand pops out like he's trying to grab it. He's trying to get hold of it. 
if you left click that and drag it down, it's going to create a line that will bring it in gradually. And let me show the instrument just so you can see what it's doing while it does its thing. So as you can see, the cutoff is now at zero because that's where our marker is. Um, hit spacebar. See how it's bringing it in like that? The last thing I like to do is it just sounded kind of cool was see when you pop over the middle of this thing, a um, little up and down arrow, I'm going to left click and just bring it pretty far down. I like when it's very slow and then gradually grabs it. And just for organizational sake, I'm going to click and drag this whole thing and just drop it below. It doesn't affect the song. If you want to keep it in there, that's fine. I just like breaking out my tracks so I can see different uh, filters and automation clips that I apply to it. Final thing you want to remember to do if you want it to play into the rest of the song, grab on my select tool and just click anywhere. That way it uh, gets rid of it and it's going to continue to play. Let's hit play. Yeah. Okay. The final product kind of brings it in in chunks. It splits it up. So I want to show you how to slice some stuff. That's a very basic thing to do and you'll find it useful in many situations. So up here is my little box cutter, my little slice tool. I'm going to left click that. Now that I've got my little box cutter selected here, I'm going to go over my pattern too and just literally at the very tippy top of it here, left click, hold it down. You'll see this little thing shows you where you're slicing. It tries to help you out a little bit and click. It uh, sliced it. Let me zoom in just a bit for you. It sliced off this little piece or it didn't slice it off. It just cut it. So I can move this around separately if I want. But what I want to do actually is to slice the other side of this as well and then right click to delete this part of the song. So let's hear that. Cool. Let me zoom back out. I'm going to slice up the rest of this. So we'll take this, slice this. I'm just slicing that fourth little section out from each of these. And I'm going to go up to my draw tool and right click to delete each of these. And that will bring us to our final product. Let's hear what that sounds like by hitting spacebar. Awesome. Great. Any comments or questions, leave them in the section below. Uh, feel free to give me a thumbs up. Uh, I'd appreciate that. Feel free to subscribe as well. All right. Thanks. Bye.